Hi, my name is Paul Krieger. I'm professor of biology at Grand Rapids Community College, and I've been teaching anatomy and physiology for many years. One of the core problems that students run into when they take this course, which is the study of the structure and function of the human body, is the voluminous amount of information that they have. You can see from these textbooks, which average over a thousand pages, that they're overwhelmed by the amount of detail and complexity of concepts that are covered in the course. So, I came up with a little solution. And the solution was to actually create my own book series called the Visual Analogy Guide series that consists of three books. The first that I wrote and illustrated is a Visual Analogy Guide to Human Anatomy, which covers structure of the human body. The second was a Visual Analogy Guide to Human Physiology, covering function. And then the third was a Visual Analogy Guide to Human Anatomy and Physiology, which is integration of the first two books. So let's look at a few examples to see uh, what we did to make things simpler and more memorable for students. So what is a visual analogy? A visual analogy is the theme of all these books. One good example would be the bones that you have in your vertebral column. If we were to look at one of the thoracic vertebrae, you'll notice that it looks very similar to a giraffe head. Another example would be a lumbar vertebra. A lumbar vertebra, if you look at it from the side, looks a lot like a moose's head. And if you superimpose, again, the moose head on the different parts of the lumbar vertebra, they can learn the parts much better. Another good example would be one of the bones that you find inside the skull, referred to as the sphenoid bone. This bone is embedded inside the skull and it's very difficult to see. By comparing it to a bat, it actually makes it much, much easier for students to learn the different parts. Uh, you can see that a portion of it looks very much like the wing of the bat, another portion looks like the legs of a bat, and if we visualize it as a long-eared bat, we can learn the parts much, much better. Another example we find inside the lymphatic system, there are many lymph nodes. We compare the lymph node to an oil filter. Just as an oil filter is going to filter out debris from the oil in your car, a lymph node can filter out debris from the fluid referred to as lymph. Another key feature of the book is the use of mnemonics throughout. This helps students remember some of the key anatomy and key bones. In this case, we have bones of the orbital complex in the orbit of the eye. Here's a mnemonic to remember some of the key ones there. The name of the mnemonic is Make Lily Eat Spinach Sack, and that stands for the maxilla, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, sphenoid, and zygomatic bones. Another unique feature is a fold-out page that shows all the bones of the skull on one side and all the bones of the skeletal system as a handy reference on the other. Another analogy would be one that's used in the physiology book. This describes the function of something that happens inside your cells. One common mechanism that occurs is a transport mechanism of how cells pump out different substances. A comparison can be made for that process to a sump pump. Just as a sump pump pumps water out of your basement, for example, and uses electrical energy, there's cellular energy that needs to be used to pump different substances across the plasma membrane of a cell. Another example for physiology is the conduction of a nerve impulse uh, along a nerve cell's axon. We compare that to a domino effect because you need to stimulate every little segment of that axon uh, in order for that nerve impulse to be propagated along. Also in the physiology book is an analogy to describe the pumping that occurs with the two ventricles inside the heart. Those two pumping chambers during their muscular action actually um, are similar to the wringing out of a rag. A feature that students really like about the visual analogy guides is that you can also use them as a coloring book. This gives an example of the muscles that you have in the face and how you can, students can color them in and also identify them by labeling them as well. Humor is also a component of the book, as you can see from this module that talks about measuring brain waves. Uh, the thought bubble reads, my wife says I'm brain dead, I guess we'll see if she was right. There are so many visual analogies inside this book series that we decided to make a visual analogy index at the beginning of the book 
to showcase them all and make for an easy reference for students. In summary, we've seen just a few of the features available in the Visual Analogy Guide series. Having used these books in my own classes with students, the feedback that we've had is very, very positive. Students enjoy learning with visual analogies. We've also received wonderful feedback from instructors all across the country. So if you're either an instructor of anatomy physiology or a student taking the course, I hope you'll find this book series useful.